Speaking of our environment, microplastics are here to stay, according to researchers, though science alone may not be enough to address this issue. Telemundo 51 meteorologist Ariel Rodriguez just came over from the Telemundo set, continuing the conversation in this in-depth look into this problem. Yeah. Yes, I just came really quick from the <laughs> Telemundo 51 studio, and we're continuing this series today. We're talking about planet and crisis solution. And today we're speaking with community leaders united in the fight against the plastic invasion threatening our ecosystems. Let's look. I thought we have a paradise, but under the paradise, underneath is you know something else, sadly, and and that's really it's heartbreaking. All these islands here, um, sadly, I have to say, when I have swum there, are full of trash. She has seen the plastic waste increase over the years while swimming through South Florida's intracoastal canals, picking up trash alongside environmental groups. People need to go out there and, and not just enjoy this paradise, but also give back. Are we using single plastic or are we finding solutions? Which could be as simple as avoiding the use of materials containing microbeads. Banned by federal law as additives in toothpaste and facial cleansers, jet allowed in other personal care products and even in makeup. I got so frustrated with that, so I created my own uh, skincare. And instead of that, I use uh, actually Icelandic volcanic ash. When something frustrates me, I also don't want to go and, you know, complain about it. I tr try to find solutions. To other activists, the solutions involve art and science. We bring artists together with climate activists, with scientists, with marine experts, with responsible businesses to help them understand how climate change and pollution are impacting our waterways. And we assist them in creating artwork with advocacy value. They involve underserved community members in these events, which have attracted over 400 people at times. However, measuring the impact of those talks upon the public has proven to be difficult, and it is done in less tangible ways. People love to hear stories, and they eventually fall in love with, let's say, a specific landscape or a specific environment when they fall in love with something they want to protect it. Over the past seven years, the nonprofit organization Before It's Too Late has focused on teaching environmental topics to children through art. A lot of times it's just giving kids the exposure to some of these ideas and also making them feel empowerment and agency like they actually have a voice or they have some power. And so we like to use creative ways to try to engage new people or to engage young people. So that's why we get, use art and we use technology. Although they lack statistics to back up the real outcome of these programs, they seek to establish connections across different parts of the community and reach those who are often marginalized. And we're letting them paint a mural and we're letting them showcase their work on a public beach in a fancy hotel and that can be exciting for a kid to know that their work is actually being showcased. Due to the economic circumstances of some of the families involved, very few children were able to witness the mural inauguration event this summer. A program constrained both organizations blame on limited funding and the need for additional staff. Beyond the joint community effort, laws and policies are also needed to change our plastic-dependent lifestyle. We will delve into that topic tomorrow on Planet in Crisis Solutions. In the studio, Ariel Rodriguez, NBC6 News.